Are we on? Hi everyone, I'm Katie Warner, Center Director here at Audubon Center for Birds of Prey. Welcome to Audubon's Back to School Bird Bash. We're so glad you took the time to join us this morning and we wish that we were welcoming you in person, but the center is still closed. We've been closed since March and we look forward to opening soon and welcoming guests back through our gates. We hope to open during September so please check our website and social media sites for updates. We'll be hosting an online pre-sale ticketing site, so you'll want to get the details. But we're so glad you're here with us this morning. We've been meeting our mission of treating injured and orphaned birds of prey, doing education and outreach, such as special virtual events like this, still protecting bald eagles in Florida, and hosting our conservation leadership initiative. Our back to school bird bash started eight years ago as a way to celebrate the start of school. But we realized this year it's very different. We're so thankful for people locally and people beyond our reach to be able to join us virtually. And we want to know, how are you going back to school this fall? There are so many choices and so many different decisions to make, but we want to hear from you. We hope you'll get involved today with voting on our polls and you can win some prizes. We'll have some random chance drawings throughout our event, so please participate. Our first one, we are going to ask how are you attending school this fall? We realize some are attending online, some are going face to face, some are going lunch to ed, some are homeschooling. It could be a hybrid of all of the above. So if you would, those that are on Zoom, please comment in the chat box. Those on Facebook, please put your comments in the, in the comments area and share with us how you're going to school and you'll be entered for a random chance drawing. If you've graduated already, just drop in the comments what your graduation year was and you'll also be registered to, winner, to win. We'll be giving away some bird feeders, which you can enjoy hanging in your yard or in your neighborhood. Again, you'll comment in the chat box in Zoom or Facebook on the comments area. For those that are new to the Center for Birds of Prey, thank you for ha having us in your living rooms today. The center started in 1979 due to a need to care for injured and orphaned raptors like eagles, hawks, owls, and falcons. Today we continue that with treating over 700 injured and orphaned birds that arrive to our doors each year. We also do education throughout the year and use ambassador birds to tell our story and use them as tools to share our conservation message. We're part of the Audubon Florida Network and we protect water and wildlife. We're also part of the National Audubon Society, extending our reach throughout the country, protecting land, water, and wildlife and working on important environmental issues like climate. Of course, one of our goals today is to raise money since closing our doors in March, we have a great financial gap we have to fill with no visitors and no in-person programming. We're asking for your help to continue to support the important work that the center does each day. You'll find the donate links throughout our event today in your chat area or comment area, and please give what you can to support our programs. We greatly appreciate it. We have some fun ways today to get involved and I'm gonna kick it over to Laura, our education manager, to share a few. Hello everyone. I'm so glad you're joining us at Bird Bash today. It's a little bit different from usual, but that's all right. We're still gonna have lots of fun. We've got some great activities planned for you guys, some interactive trivia and some polls and meeting birds, of course. They're coming, they're on their way. And uh, we're gonna learn how our ambassador birds would have done at school. And by that, I mean that we're going to vote for their class superlatives. So that was one of my favorite things in school was getting to vote for the most likely to succeed or the class clown. And voting for that was always so much fun for me. I actually got voted prettiest eyes a few times. And we're going to do that with our birds. So staff has chose some superlatives already for some of our bird ambassadors. And then we're going to need your help and voting for some of them as well. So we're gonna do our very first one right now. Give me a second to share my screen and I will show you how this is gonna work. So in our voting, 
you will see if you are in Zoom, a poll will pop up. If you're on Facebook, you're gonna use the emoji reactions in under the like fun function. So our very first class of perlative y'all are gonna vote for is what bird species should receive the best flyer? So your choices are the peregrine falcon, the swallowtail kite, or the cooper's hawk. Now, some reasons why you might choose these guys. The peregrine falcon, they are the fastest birds. They die for their food at over 200 miles per hour. The swallowtail kites, they will migrate thousands of miles as they are headed from the U.S. down to the Amazon basin. So that's a great flying skill. And then the Cooper's hawks, they have long skinny bodies made for fitting in between branches of trees in order to get their food. So lots of options there for our best flyer award. And again, you guys should be voting either in the poll if you are on Zoom or in the uh, like function with the emojis you can see on the screen, thumbs up for the falcon, heart for the kite, and the little laughy face for the Cooper's hawk. And we'll give you just another second here to vote and then we'll be able to find out what superlative you all voted for. And keep an eye out for the rest of the Bird Bash today. You will see more polls like this popping up and we will be able to figure out some of these class superlatives. All right, we are headed back to Katie Warner. Hi guys, great job, wasn't that fun? Who did you vote for? I believe our best flyer winner was the swallowtail kite. Ah, one of my total favorites. Their migration is amazing and their ability to catch prey on the wing always continues to fascinate me. Stick around for more voting throughout our event. If you're new here, we want to welcome our first time visitors to the Center for Birds of Prey. And thank you again for joining the Back to School Bird Bash. We're getting ready to visit our first um, ambassadors, but let's announce some winners. We have Kim Dorzinski from Facebook and Laura Kruger from Zoom. If you'll please check your areas um, and direct message us with your address, we will mail you your prizes after today's event. Awesome, I'm so excited for today. Let's welcome Maggie and Laura. Good morning, everybody. My name is Maggie. I'm a volunteer here at the center and joining me is Susie, one of our educational ambassadors. Um, when you think of uh, birds of prey and raptors, you probably first think of the big birds like the eagles and the owls, but American kestrels are a perfect example of why raptor, the raptors come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. American kestrels like Susie, they're the smallest falcons in North America, and we have them in Florida year round. You're gonna find them mostly on the borders of woodlands, fields, pastures, and you might also see them perching on telephone lines. You probably saw one and looked up and thought it was just another songbird. But one of the things you can watch for with kestrels is they make a distinct motion with their head and their tail. It's kind of a bob. I'm not sure if Susie will do it for us this morning, but uh, we'll see. So anyway, that's one way to pick them out when you're out and watching birds in the wild. Susie is full grown. And usually kestrels are no more than about nine inches from the top of their head to the tip of their tail. And they are roughly about four to five ounces in weight. The females are always going to be a little bit larger because they're built to carry the eggs. Kestrels like to nest in cavities and trees mostly, but they'll use a nest box. And they'll also find some abandoned nests sometimes from hawks and such. Susie is full grown and she is three years old and she came to us with a wing fracture. Unfortunately, we did not get her uh, in time to be able to set her wing so it could heal properly. Um, and that's one of the interesting things about bones. Their bones are hollow, which is great because they heal quickly, but not great if we don't get them in time. Let's see, what else? Hunting. When the kestrels are hunting, their wings beat really rapidly. Um, they are going to dive to catch their food. They're going to hover over their target while they're watching prey down below. And they're even going to catch some of it on the fly. Um, so that's one of the really great talents and why they need really good wings. And the, the reason why Susie would not be able to be released into the wild. Um, she can flit around a little bit, but she's not able to do what a kestrel needs to do to survive and catch their prey in the wild. Um, what did they like to eat? They like to eat insects. Uh, 
small mammals, small birds, and uh, reptiles or amphibians. So uh, they're pretty diverse hunters. A couple of characteristics about kestrels as well. Um, if you'll notice under Susie's eyes are some dark lines. Those are called mallard lines. Um, they are believed to cut down glare. And you might think about it if you've watched a football team, those guys put on dark marks under their eyes to help reduce the glare when they're playing on the football field. So they stole that from the birds. What else? Um, on her beak, she has an extra little protrusion. Little, I call it a notch, but an extra little thing. It's called a toenail tooth. And it's part of their design so that when they catch their prey, um, they can kill it instantly with their beak. So that helps them as well. And one last thing, on the back of Susie's head, you might see two other dark marks. Looks like another set of eyes coming at you almost. It's part of their beautiful camouflage um, that helps them when predators might be coming from behind. Um, they might see already like two eyes are facing at them and deter them and the predators go the other way. Susie has some beautiful feathering colors. She has a little brown speckled chest and brown and black uh, speckled on her wings. And that's what's really distinct about a female American kestrel. And now Laura's gonna come and share Lance with you and tell you a little bit more about their coloring. Laura? Hello everyone, I'm back again. And I have Lance, the male American kestrel. So you just heard all about the kestrels in general and saw the female. And in this case, you can see how his coloration is different with his gray colored wings and his solid back and gray head. So for most raptors, the other species, you cannot tell male and female apart. They look exactly the same. Kestrels are one of the exceptions to that where you can actually tell whether you are seeing a male or a female based on their coloration. And there's the head bob. Susie didn't do it for us, but there's the head bob that Maggie mentioned that they, uh, the kestrels are known for. Now, Lance is five years old and he was rescued with an injured pelvis, so his hip bones. And you might be able to notice how he sits a little funny on the perch with his tail tucked in. And that's just uh, still the result of that pelvis injury. We were unable to get it to heal well enough for him to go back to the wild. So he has been with us for those last few years as one of our ambassador birds. Now, Susie and Lance together won a class superlative of being the cutest couple and the homecoming king and queen, uh, which is of course adorable. It is fun to see the males and females together, but I should also say our center doesn't have breeding permits. So although they look very cute together, they are not actually a, a mated pair. Now, we are raising funds today. One of the reasons why we have our bird bash is to help support our center. We closed down in March. We've actually been closed to the public since uh, for 167 days. Not that anyone's counting, but because of that, we need your help. You will find the donation link in the comments or the chat section, and you are able to, if you're able to help us, we would really appreciate your support. We have continued our bird care and our mission of being able to educate the public about the need for raptors and healthy habitats. All right, next up, we are going to test your knowledge with some trivia. We're headed to our science class with Kristen. So anybody who votes is eligible to win a prize during our trivia game. All right, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for Bird Bash today and for trivia. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so. <laughs> How trivia is going to work this morning. This is not a pop quiz. This is definitely just some fun trivia for us today. Uh, just a reminder, trivia will best be experienced with your sound on. We will have some sound effects today, uh, so make sure you don't have yourself on mute for this. That's going to work is uh, much like the polls we've done so far, uh, the questions will appear here. If you're joining us on Facebook, you can use your emojis or your reactions uh, to select your answer. And as you do so, uh, you'll be able to see what everyone else thinks the answer is too. If you're joining us, or you can try that now if you're joining us on Facebook. Uh, if you're joining us on Zoom, the polling feature will come up. You'll have a few seconds to choose your answer. And then we'll go over the correct answer together and uh, see what everyone else said too. All right, be sure that you participate, vote, use your reactions on Facebook because we will be um, doing a chance drawing from the people that participate in our trivia. All right, so let's get started here. 
How wide is a bald eagle's wingspan? Is it five feet, seven feet, 10 feet, or 12 feet? I'll give you a couple seconds to think about that one. All right, I'll give you like five more seconds to get your answer in here. All right, so let's see what you all selected. All right, so pretty varied in our answers here, um, but about half of you said seven feet, and that's correct. Great job, everyone. So uh, bald eagles here in Florida, their wingspan can range between six and eight feet. Um, as we mentioned when we were introducing uh, Susie and Lance just a minute ago, um, in most raptor species, the females are larger. So generally females are larger in bald eagles as well. Um, and here in Florida, this is the average wingspan for our eagles, uh, but eagles up in Alaska tend to even be much larger than that. So their wingspan can get even larger. All right, next question here. What do you call a group of sitting vultures? This is a great question. I love uh, names for groups of animals. All right, so go ahead and um, choose, oh, there you go. All right, so go ahead and select your answer here. Uh, this one's a tough one. Let's see if you know this. I'll give you about 10 more seconds to choose your answer. All right, let's see what you selected here. All right, so over half of you said parliament and it's actually committee. So the interesting thing is groups of vultures have a lot of different names depending on what they're doing at that moment. So they're a committee if they're all sitting on the ground together, um, but they're called a wake if they're all eating and a kettle if they're all flying. So if you've ever seen a group of vultures, um, flying kind of in that circular motion. That's called kettling, and they're called a kettle as they fly together in that, or soar in that circular motion. All right, next question here. Which of the following does not help to classify a bird as a bird of prey? So what we're looking for here is the kind of feature on a bird that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bird of prey. Lots of fast answers on this one. So we'll give you about five more seconds to select your answer. All right, let's see what you all selected. Flies fast. Yes, that is absolutely the correct answer. So lots of birds of prey can fly fast, but, that, but birds that fly fast aren't necessarily a bird of prey just because they can fly fast. So this is a picture of a peregrine falcon here, um, which is a very, very fast bird. And we'll talk about how fast they are a little bit later too. Um, but remember other birds of prey uh, don't necessarily fly fast. That's not a, a major trait of theirs. Uh, many birds soar, glide, or spend time on the ground like a um, burrowing owl or even vultures spend a lot of time on the ground too. All right. Swallowtail kites are migratory. About how far do they travel each way during their migration? So if you have a really great memory, Laura briefly mentioned where they travel to and from, which might help you out a little bit in selecting your answer. Give you about 10 more seconds here. All right, let's see what the group thought. All right, so the group says about 4,000 miles. I have a terrible spatial sense. So let's see, oh, and you all are right, it's 4,000 miles. Um, so as Laura mentioned earlier, uh, they have a pretty expansive migration. So they will travel um, 
from the Southeast region of the United States down to the Amazon basin and then back. So they're at this point of the year, they're probably on their way back down to the Amazon basin. Uh, they visit us for the summer. So they take a little summer vacation to the Southeast United States. Good job, everyone. All right, next question. When you hear a bald eagle um, in movies and TV shows, it usually is the wrong bird call. The call you're actually hearing belongs to a who? We'll give you about 10 more seconds to answer this one. So a lot of people don't realize that that sound you're hearing doesn't belong to a bald eagle. Um, the sound a bald eagle really makes is not nearly as majestic. So I get why they would want to use a little bit of movie magic, um, but it's not real. All right, let's see what everyone selected. Good job. So most people got that right. That is, in fact, the sound of a red-tailed hawk. So I have that sound here for you to hear. So that sound Sounds like that, which is definitely not what a bald eagle actually sounds like. You might be able to hear a bald eagle sound a little bit later. All right, next question. What species is this adorable baby raptor that you're seeing in this picture here? What kind of species is this? All right, I'm seeing these answers come in and I'm seeing everyone's on the right track here. Have about five more seconds to choose your answer. All right, let's see what everyone thought. All right, good job. Over half of you got that one right. So this is a picture of a baby barred owl. This is actually one of our ambassador birds. Um, all three of these pictures are pictures of Maple. So we had Maple um, ever since she was a teeny tiny chick, um, several days old. And so she came in as a little um, nestling or hatchling um, and has grown up with us ever since. So that far right photo is a picture of her fully grown and she's still with us today, um, helping us teach about um, raptors and birds of prey. Good job. Um, some things that you might have used to know that this was a barred owl, is you can actually see her beak looks very similar in all three of the photos. So she has a, a narrow yellow beak, and then you can't really see them um, in all of her cute little chick fluff, uh, but she has uh, fluffy legs. So she has feathered legs, which is an indication that she's an owl too. When she got a little bit older, you can start to see that facial disc, uh, which she has as an adult as well. So just some of the clues that you can use to help decide that maple was a barred owl as a chick. All right, next question. True or false, osprey are bad hunters and often steal fish from other birds. Interesting. Do you think osprey steal from other birds or do you think that they hunt for themselves? We'll give you just a few seconds on this one since there's only two, two answers to choose from. All right, let's see what you thought. Okay, so most of you thinks, think that this is false, which is correct. So osprey are actually really great hunters. Um, they're really built for hunting fish um, and bald eagles will steal fish from them. So even the bald eagles know that they are very good hunters and fishers and will even rely on them to do their fishing for them sometimes. All right, so listen up because this one is a bird call question for you. So which owl makes this call here? All right couple seconds to 
click your answers here. Yeah, so this is a call that um, you might hear in your neighborhood at night. Uh, this is probably the call that most people think of when you think of an owl call. Uh, let's see, let's see what our answers say here. All right, so a little split in your answers here, but about 57% of you um, thought it was the great horned owl, which is correct. And this is a picture of Henry, um, our newest uh, great horned owl ambassador at the center. So a lot of people call great horned owls the hoot owl, which is a great name for them because they have that very um, well-known hoot hoot call. Um, so a lot of other owls in our area or all of the other owls in our area have different distinctive calls that don't quite sound like that hoot hoot. So if that's what you're hearing, uh, lucky you, that means that there's a great horned owl somewhere in your area, which is really great. They're such beautiful birds. All right, next question. Falcons will dive from above for food. What is this high speed dive called? Is it a speed, a stoop, a streak, or a stop? Give you about five seconds here. This one is a tough one. Um, many people might not have ever heard this bird before, uh, but peregrine falcons are known for their diving. We just might not call it something so technical. All right, let's see what everyone chose. All right, so most people thought it was streak, but it's actually called a stoop. So that dive they do is called a stoop and um, they do it really, really, quickly so they can reach speeds of over 200 miles per hour when diving. Um, scientists and people in the animal community have different feelings about this, but many people will say that they are actually the fastest animal in the world because of that dive. I personally like to think that they are falling with style when they dive, but either way, it's pretty impressive that they're able to reach uh, such fast speeds when they dive. Or stoop. Alrighty, so that is all the trivia we have for you here, but it is time for you to vote for another class superlative. So now it's time for you to vote on who should get awarded the best hairdo. Should it be the Great Horned Owl, the Crested Caracara, the Eastern Screech Owl, So which one of these three should get the superlative or the award for the best hairdo? Give you five more seconds to cast your vote here. All right, so let's see who the winner is. The Crested Caracara. That's so great. I think that they have a really wonderful hairdo as well. Alrighty, so now it is time for some prizes. So if you participated, you were eligible to win a prize with us. So our Zoom winner is Ashraf Alam, and our Facebook winner is Megan Johnson Fitzgerald. So Ashraf and Megan, uh, you will see a message pop up in the chat box uh, with information about how to get us your information so we can give your prizes to you. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Uh, once again, just as a reminder, uh, the center could really use your help. So if you are able to donate in any way, we would really appreciate it. The link to donate will be in the chat box as well. Thank you so much for joining us for uh, our Back to School Bird Bash trivia today. But we're not done with the Back to Bird School Bird Bash overall today. Uh, so now I'm going to hand it over to Nancy, who's got another friend for you to meet this morning. Thanks for playing. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Nancy, and I have with me here Sanford, the Eastern Screech Owl. Sanford is so cute. Everybody falls in love with him when they see him, and partly it's because he's so little. And it always raises the first question about him. Is Sanford a baby? And the answer is no. Sanford is a full-grown Eastern Screech Owl. He's actually nine years old. Pretty old guy. So Sanford came to us when he was a baby. He'd fallen from his nest in the town of Sanford, Florida, hence the name. And he was rescued, brought to us, and he had badly injured his wing. So while we cared for him, the wing was never healed well enough that he could fly and survive on, out in the wild on his own. So he's became an education ambassador bird. So in addition to being cute, he helps educate people about owls and other raptors. So Sanford's actually looking a little scruffy right now, and that's because he's molting. Molting is the process where birds lose their worn out feathers and start growing in new ones. And for raptors, that happens this time of year in the summertime. In the spring, they're busy uh, ra raising their babies. But once they've finished doing all that, they direct their energies to creating new feathers. And so Sanford's in the process of doing that right now. And in a few weeks or in a month or so, he'll have all his new feathers and a whole new set and will look uh, a little bit less scruffy, right, Sanford? Yeah. So a couple things about these owls. They are eastern screech owls. They're found in the eastern half of the United States, which means east of the, uh, the Rocky Mountains. They like to live in hardwood forests. They like the big old trees. And they like those because it provides some protection. It provides habitat for their prey. Um, and importantly, it provides big holes in trees where they can provide nests for their babies. They are cavity nesters. So they're looking for trees that have holes in them. And you might have some hardwood trees in your neighborhood, maybe a lot of them, and it's possible that you've got eastern screech owls living near you. They're hard to see, and for a couple reasons. Number one, they're small. They're also nocturnal. Sanford's looking away. They're nocturnal, so they're active at nighttime while we're sleeping. They're up and about doing their thing. And, uh, and thirdly, they're really well camouflaged. So even if you came across one of these owls in the daytime, if you look at Sanford's coloration and the stripes of his feathers, he would camouflage really well against an old oak tree, even pine trees and stuff. So they're well camouflaged. But keep your eyes and ears open because they might be around your, around your neighborhood. So I want to point out a couple things. They have ear tufts and Sanford just kind of raised his. These are the pointy things on top of his head. They're not actually their ears. They're just feather tufts. They can lay them down or raise them up. Scientists aren't 100% sure what they're for. I think perhaps it helps in aiding with the camouflage. Perhaps it aids them in communication with other birds. And the other thing about owls is people always talk about them turning their heads all around. And maybe you've seen this in cartoons where the owls are spinning their heads. Well, they actually can't turn their heads all the way around, but they can turn them most of the way around, about three quarters of a pie, 270 degrees. So they can sit on a branch very quietly and move their head around looking for prey or for predators. Um, he's a small bird. So a small bird means small feet and small talons, and that means the prey he catches also has to be small. So you might picture an eagle or a big hawk catching a, a rabbit or a squirrel. Well, Sanford can't do that, but he can catch little things, and his diet would be primarily insects. So if you don't like things like roaches, screech owls are a great thing to have around because they eat roaches. You might eat also small mammals, maybe little mice, things like that. Sanford has already been voted the superlative most likely to be famous. And that's because Sanford is already on the road to fame. In addition to all the people that love him when they come to the center and see him or have seen him out in educational programs, Sanford also has his own Facebook and Instagram accounts. So you too can help Sanford on his road to fame by following him on those accounts. I think we're putting the names up on, uh, up on the chat. It's uh, Sanford of CBOP for Instagram or Sanford the Eastern Screech Owl for Facebook. So help Sanford even become more famous. So Sanford and all of our education birds uh, work to help teach people about raptors and their importance in the ecological niche, as well as what we can do to help them. And to help these birds in the wild, we need to do things like conserve their habitat and make sure that they have plenty of fresh, uh, fresh water, clean water, clean air. And we, there's things that we can do to help these guys. And remember that your donations to the center help support, among other things, our educational mission to teach people about raptors. So now we are going on to our home economics class. What is that? I guess we're going to find out. So on to home ec. Hi, everyone. 
so glad you're able to join us today for Back to School Bird Bash 2020, the virtual version. I am here in the bird garden with my friend Rania. And Rania is a red-shouldered hawk. You can probably hear the eagles in the background as well. Now, Rania is uh, 10 years old this year and she was rescued because she was found and kept as a pet and as a human imprint, so could not go back to the wild. But she is one of our residents here and she loves enrichment. So I'm gonna show you really quick about uh, bird enrichment. Follow me down below. So we are now down in the service building at the center. And one of my favorite classes when I was in school was we had one semester of home economics or home ec class. I'm not even sure they do this anymore. Drop in the comments if you took home ec or drop in the comments if you've never heard of it before perhaps. And home ec for me, well, I loved all of the crafts that we did, the sewing, but also the cooking. And so when it comes to our birds, I like to think of enrichment a little bit like home ec class that I loved so much in school. So enrichment is anything we do for the birds that is sort of enhances their life and brings out their natural behaviors. So for a bird of prey, a lot of that does involve food, since in the wild they do spend a lot of their days hunting for their food. Let me show you what we have. So this is our bin of enrichment, and it's got all sorts of things in it that we use for the birds. So you can see we've got egg cartons, toilet paper rolls, dog toys, puzzle feeders, baby toys, all sorts of things in here that we would use. And in many of these we can hide food, for example, or close up the egg carton with food in it, or just put natural items like uh, leaves, grasses, things like that to sort of make this all very interesting for our birds to explore and uh, and be able to enrich their lives with. So let me get some of this enrichment together and give it to the birds and then you guys will get to watch and see if they like the enrichment. Now I'm just with our black vulture, Ufta, behind me here in her enclosure. And vultures are the next that we need your help in deciding what their class superlative would be. So you guys are gonna vote just like you did before using the various emojis on Facebook and in the poll in Zoom and help us figure out what the class superlative would be for our vultures. Your choices for black vulture class superlative are most likely to be a supermodel, most social, or most intelligent. Vote now and we'll tell you in just a minute which superlative won. Thank you so much for joining us for our back to school bird bash today. 
We typically have this event to help raise donations for our center and we hope that you guys will help us out today by checking out the donation links in the comments. Hi everyone, how cool was that video? I hope you learned a little bit about enrichment and maybe take some of that home to what you can do for your pets around your house. As you can see, our birds thoroughly enjoy enrichment and it is so important to their lives here at the Center for Birds of Prey. You can also offer enrichment for wild birds at your house. You can hang up a bird feeder, um, put out a bird bath, plant native plants around your yard. All of these things are great enrichment opportunities for wild birds as well. So the voting for the black vulture superlative is over and I believe the winner was that they were most intelligent which they are definitely top intelligent birds. Um, they are very inquisitive, they love enrichment. Um, we enjoy our black vulture friends here at the Center for Birds of Prey. Today, I just wanted to share a little bit more about um, how we were doing in our program areas since many of you haven't been able to come visit. As of August, we've admitted 614 injured and orphaned birds at our facility. So that's a lot of birds throughout the year, especially since we've been closed since March. Most of the injuries we see are vehicle strikes, electrocutions, sometimes poisons, and even gunshot wounds. So our team works really hard to get our birds back to health and back into the wild. All of this takes an extreme amount of resources and time and energy to get them where they need to be. We've released thousands of birds since our opening back into the wild and over including in that number is over 625 bald eagles. Each year, uh, our team admits between 70 to 80 bald eagles at our facility, and it takes about $3,000 to rehabilitate a bald eagle back into the wild. So we really need your help and your donations to help support our programs, not only our educational initiatives, but also our clinical care and our community science. We have one last prize to give away today, so we want you to be involved please share with us what your favorite raptor is. So you can include that in the chat area in Zoom or your comment area in Facebook, and we will put you in for another drawing. I'm sure we have some athletes in our audience today. Raptors are the ultimate athletes with their abilities to fly, hunt, dive. Many of you might've been football quarterbacks, volleyball stars on the crew or track teams. And so our um, birds here at the Center for Birds of Prey are the extreme athletes with their abilities to hunt and get their food. So we wanna introduce you to one of our favorite athletes at the center, an osprey. Thanks, Katie. This truly is one of our athletes here at the center. This is Hank, he's one of our osprey. Osprey are really well known for diving into the water and he'd probably get a perfect 10 diving into the water. And, and when they do that, they actually submerge themselves, pull their fish up, and they've got really great, <laughs> they got really great little uh, rough feet and really long semicircular talons to help grasp that fish and pull it out of the water. And they're actually so good at fishing that those eagles, they're just gonna try and see any osprey that might be around and steal that fish from them. So they have to be quick and they have to be fast. So Hank here loves the water. He's a good at diving, he's good at fishing. He, the osprey primarily eat fish, although they do eat other things. And Hank here was actually brought to us from South Florida. He had fallen out of his nest and was unable to be brought back uh, to his, his nest. He was raised and unfortunately became uh, habituated to people. And so he's unable to be released because he just doesn't understand that he is an osprey uh, and what he would be doing out in the wild. But he still loves his fish. He still loves flying back and forth. He, he's sorry. He's one of our most active flyers here at the center. You always see him in the morning before he comes out flying in his muse. So he does keep his wing exercises up and he keeps, you know, in tune with all he's doing to be his top athlete self. So his superlative would be most likely to win an Olympic medal. What are your thoughts on Ospreys? And um, I don't know who we're going back to. We're going back to Katie uh, to find out what's next. Thanks, Sam. I hope you guys got a chance to meet Hank. He's one of my favorite birds here at the center. 
And I wanted to announce the winners from our next, <laughs> our next um, prize drawing will be in just a minute. So we have a few things that we're gonna show you before we wrap it up today. We've had one of our birds that insists on being included today and hmm, Laura will be out with him in just a minute. But remember, we're asking today for your support and your donations. So please help us fill our financial gap until we're able to see you in person again. Check the links in your chat area or the comments area of your Facebook. To announce the winners today, we have Catherine Chupakoff from Facebook and Lydia Cass from Zoom. Congratulations. Please check your, um, your messages, your direct messages on how to get your address information to us and we'll send out your prize. Ah! Our last resident is here, so let's kick it over to Laura. Hello, everyone. So one of our most favorite, favorite and famous residents uh, insisted upon being here with us today. So I have Trouble the Bald Eagle. And Trouble is one of our oldest residents at 34 years old. And if you check out his face, you might be able to see he was rescued because of his beak. So he has a scissored beak. It's actually crossed over. It doesn't line up the way it should opening and closing. He was spotted in his nest by a wildlife photographer that noticed his beak was crooked. We worked with FWC here in Florida to take him from his nest and he had a few surgeries when he was younger. And we got his beak better, but never enough to go back to the wild. So he's been with us for 34 years, which is pretty impressive. And again, he is uh, one of our favorites around here. He's one of our bird ambassadors who is obviously glove trained and kennel trained and often will go visit schools in order to teach children about the importance of raptors and their habitats. Now, we have one last poll for you guys in voting for class superlatives. We're going to figure out what class superlative bald eagles should get. So your choices, well, you're going to do like what you did before, voting in the polls or voting by the emojis in Facebook. And your choices for bald eagle are either worst singer, best dressed, or most likely to be your boss. All of those are quite fitting in my opinion. We learned before that beautiful majestic call you associate with bald eagles is not actually their call. They're quite squeaky and not very cute when they make their noise. They are quite well dressed. You can see their beautiful attire. And bald eagles are a little bit of a bully. They like to boss uh, other birds around. We mentioned before that they will steal fish from ospreys. So any of those choices would be great options for you to choose for the bald eagle superlative. So go ahead and vote for that now. As you do, I'm going to continue talking about our bald eagle here. They are impressive birds. They have very strong talons. In their talons, they have strength of squeezing over 300 pounds of pressure per square inch. They are mostly fish eagles, but they're also opportunistic. So they will steal fish from ospreys, like we've mentioned. They will eat roadkill. They will eat other birds um, and other mammals as well that they find for their hunting. So they've got great eyesight to be able to do that. And of course, they're wonderful, sharp talons. All right, that is our last bird ambassador to see you. We're gonna send it back over to Katie Warner to wrap up. Hi guys, I'm sure you're excited to see Trouble. He always insists on being involved in our our programs here at the Center for Birds of Prey. And I hope you enjoyed your time here today. Again, we really look forward to reopening soon, so check back on our website, and we hope to, we plan to open during September. That way, when you come and visit, you can get a chance to see in person Trouble, Rania, Lance, Susie, some of the birds we got to meet today, especially Sanford. Again, thank you for your support. Thank you for our team that did it today. And again, we're asking for your donations. Give anything you can. If you haven't had a chance, we would appreciate it. Check the links in your comments area and chat box. And today we leave you with something super fun we thought from us. We will be sharing a throwback from our high school years with some of our photos and any superlatives that we might have won as staff at the Center for Birds of Prey. So again, thanks for joining us and we'll see you all soon. <laughs>